key F2 is default settings leave a lot of room for improvement. Well, to be honest, they are horrible and the game should not be like this on a fresh install. The right settings give you a slight advantage over players using the default settings. Even if you are a TF2 veteran, I guarantee you that you will find something useful in this video. Make full use of keybinds. Binding keys is a very powerful tool that makes your gameplay a lot easier. For example, if you want to use the voice line thank you in game, it's difficult to pull up the voice menu and select the right one. It would be a lot easier to just push a button. You need to enable the console in order to make binds. Go to your Steam Launcher, TF2, then click Properties, go to Launch Options. Type dash console there. Then in game, pull up the console by pressing the key that's under the escape key. If you want to bind the voice line thank you, just type bind in quote alt in quote voice menu 01 in the console and the key is bound forever to that. As for the other launch options, I have a bunch of other stuff in there and I won't go into detail. The ideal launch options differ greatly from user to user, for example if you run a config or auto config. The most important usage for keybinds is to make binds for your loadouts. I suggest you use the 1 to 4 numbers on your numpad for the loadouts to access them easily. Not only can you change your loadout very fast, it gives you several other advantages. If your spawn has moved up, for example on a payload map, you can just press the loadout button and you respawn immediately at the new spawn that is further to the objective. You can also use it in spawn, for example when you are burning and can't reach the cabinet in time. You can also use it in spawn if the cabinet is too far away in the back. If you play engineer, it is also useful to press the loadout buttons in spawn to refresh your metal. Keep in mind that you need to be alive and in the spawn room to have an immediate effect on the loadout keys. Especially for engineer who benefits a lot from changing loadouts on the fly, the loadout binds are especially useful. Truly advanced usage of the binds is when you combine the binds. For example, by pressing the mouse wheel down, I build a sentry when I'm engineer, I disguise as spy when I play spy and also use a certain voice line. You can achieve that by putting a semicolon after the first command. The normal build in a sentry voice line gets overwritten by the cheers voice line, which is used to hide it from nearby enemies that I'm building a new sentry. If you play spy, I suggest you use keybinds for the disguises that are hard to reach. For example, when you manually disguise a spyro, you press 4-3, which is easy. If you want to disguise a sniper, you have to press 4-8, which is harder to press. Hard to reach disguises are medic, sniper and spy, so I suggest you use binds for it or follow my instructions further. For the right side mouse button, I suggest also using a bind combination. For engineer, it destroys an existing dispenser and builds a new one. For spy, it disguises as sniper and it plays the voice line activate charge. As an NG, you can instantly build a new dispenser, skipping the slow process of destroying it manually with the PDA and manually building a new one. This can also be used to put down a dispenser in some tight corridor to block enemies. As spy, I discovered that you can mask your decloak sound by playing some voice lines. The loudest voice line is activate charge from sniper. By pressing the right side mouse button and decloaking at the same time, you can sometimes mask your cloak perfectly. The voice line activate charge is also very useful when you play heavy, soldier or demo to signal your medic that it's time to use uber on you. As for the left side mouse button, I play the short voice line go right in disguise as medic. 
For example, when you eat a sandwich as heavy, you can mask the munching sound by playing the short right voice line. So no one knows when you eat a sandwich. It can be useful to use the short voice line when you play medic and have uber to hide your ion charged voice line. You can also use it for the automatic voice lines on payload. The card has stopped, which can give you away. It's also good to have a shortcut for the hard to reach medic disguise. If you haven't bound your mouse 3 to 5 buttons, I suggest that you do. If you play spy and engineer frequently, I recommend doing something like I did. Experiment a bit. What I show here and what is in the video description are just recommendations. If you use the Eureka effect on Engineer, I have the best keybinds for you. Pressing the asterisk or multiply key on the numpad automatically takes off the Eureka effect and teleports you to base. Pressing the minus or dash key on the numpad teleports you to your teleporter exit. Instead of pressing three buttons, you only press one. This is a lot faster than switching to your wrench. Pull up the menu by pressing the reload button and then selecting one or two. When you play Medic, I have a super useful keybind for you. The bind shows you the location of all your teammates for a short time. Use it when you are alone and wonder where all your teammates are. Take note that this works only for Medic class. Credits for this go to a theory why. I forgot to mention the most basic bind that everybody needs. The kill bind. Whether you are stuck in a door or some troll engineer's teleporter let you enter nowhere, you want a bind that kills yourself at the press of a button. Bind in quotes, P in quotes, kill. Most of you will already have such a bind. If not, hurry up and put that into your console. Enable mouse in scoreboard. A setting that I only activated recently is enabling mouse control on scoreboard. When you press tab, you pull up the scoreboard. Do you want to mute some mic spammer or annoying kid? Do you want to report a cheater easily? Just right click the guy. It's much faster that way. Do you want to easily access people's steam profile and check them out? The most benefit from this is to easily add somebody as your friend on Steam, which is very clunky if you do it with the Steam app by exchanging friend codes or finding people in the community tab. The easiest way to enable this setting is in advanced options. You can also left click the names to see their kills, deaths and other details. Keep in mind that you can't look around now anymore while you pull up the scoreboard. Get view models right. If you play TF2, then you probably have this setting already. We all know that TF2's default settings suck. You really want to make the weapons you are holding smaller and a bit longer. For that, open up the console and paste these commands one by one. After some testing, these were the perfect values for me. Get the hit sound, kill sound. Like the last one, you should already have this enabled. Just enable it in options and put some sounds from Game Banana in the folder. Hit sounds and kill sounds not only let you know once an attack hits, but also once you killed your opponent. For Pyro, it can be important to know which enemy is taking afterburn damage, or on NG when your sentry is shooting somebody. It also makes it a lot more satisfying to make kills. Get a heart. This is also something that I only implemented recently. I basically played TF2 for three and a half years without a heart. A HUD adds so much more quality to the game, from details in the scoreboard to readjusting important things like ammo, counter or killstreak. The default settings sometimes make it hard to read. My personal choice is Tune HUD, because you have a lot of room for customization, but also the HUD is not too far off from the original game. 
The loadout screen is a lot better from the default one. A lot of people enjoy Bud HUD. Feel free to figure out which HUD suits you the best. Essential game options. First, I recommend to activate raw input. You should experiment with your mouse DPI and mouse sensitivity as well as mouse acceleration. After experimenting a bit, you will find a setting that just feels right. Essential advanced options. Enable fast weapon switch. Most of you will have it enabled already. If you don't, hurry up and do it. It's just faster. All the three damage options checked. It is important to know how much damage you dealt and how much HP the enemy has remaining. It's a no-brainer to have that enabled if you want to improve your gameplay. Enable all three medic specific options. Auto call to AT. The first option makes it so that you don't have to hold down mouse 1 when you are healing a target. The second option makes it apparent who you are healing. The third option is a big one. It shows an image over a player's head when they are below 80% health. This shows you who needs healing and where exactly the teammates are. I also recommend to uncheck disabled floating health bars so it makes it a little easier as medic to see your patient's health. That's it for all the settings. Especially if you play Medic, I recommend you visit Theory Wise's video on it. You find it at the bottom in the description. In my opinion, much of what I presented should come with a fresh game install, like the loadout binds or the Eureka effect tricks or the smaller view models. Let me know if this was helpful or if you have suggestions or other feedback. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my stuff and you want to be notified when a new upload comes in. I upload once a week. Click the video on the right for weird weapon loadout gameplay. Thanks for watching, bye.